Progo Racing presents Charles Your Tips, Daggy and Beaver with you for a midweek preview show. Uh, two not bad looking cards at the end of the day, both on wet tracks. Uh, we kick off. Oh, hey, you traveling first of all, Beaver. As we get into oh, good. Thank racing. you, mate. Um, th- thanks for asking, as you always do. I'm traveling well. What about yourself? Yeah, just whacking away, looking for a winner as usual. Uh, coming off a lack of racing on the Saturday, so can to have a bit today. But um, we'll kick off at Sandy. You're looking quite a sharp there, mate. Have you um, had a haircut or something? I think it just fell out, to oh, be honest. But, um, standard. Yeah. <laughs> or you pulled it out. It's, it's the two months you have to do some work, so... That's probably the pulling out from the the Great Tigers uh, travesty. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Um, no, I have not me either. Had a good sporty. Anyway, um, I, I recovered from it. So we'll move on. You can hear my thoughts on uh, footy and frothies on Spotify. There you go. Go look for that. Um, Perfect. Along with the other the other keen in the world, the gump. But anyway, should we talk about racing? Let's do that. Sandown. The rail, it's a heavy eight. The rail is in the 14 meter mark. I suspect that means probably want to be don't, don't want to be too far from the pace. We kick off with a 1300 meter maiden, uh, no, not a maiden at all, 1300 meter, uh, two year old race. In fact, um, how are you going to start the day, Eva? Yeah, based on exactly that, um, thinking on pace to have a look early in the day, um, and then make sort of you can play from there. I went from Madame, Madame Dubai from the Stoke Stable. Um, thought it could uh, jump on the pace, really liked the win at Maui, um, uh, sprinted away from him there and uh, looks to have a little bit of ability. Um, so I had it on top. Nice. I was, um, look, I ended up finding, uh, I thought Freeway might roll forward and control the pace here with Oliver and, and uh, Oliver in the blue colours there, roll forward and find the pace. Um, uh, on the pace, I should say. Um, from Madden Dubai, you mentioned Attrition obviously was an eye-catcher, but um, I was just worried where he gets through in the run uh, on same this. Same. I'd want to see where the track plays out before I'm charging to back markers. The second is a 2,400-metre benchmark 70, another one of these fine midweek staying races. I'm, I'm saying that Chatelaine's probably ready now, uh, has had the uh, the run at the 2,400 metres uh, to prep for this. I was a bit one pace, but I think that'll do it better, as well as the inside draw, and i couldn't find a lot of other chances, to be honest with you. Um, so on top from me for the for the pain yard, what have you done here? Yeah, tricky little affair. Yeah. Chatelaine does look look ready. Um, and from the pain stable, you can obviously not rule out. I just went for um, AC Dulcie uh, from the Smith yard. I really like the way it hit the line at um, when Amber uh, last start got back a bit and, and beat a horse that was showing some potential. Just Jono just followed it into the race. It looked to be sort of hard ridden, but once the further they went, the more it looked like it was work, getting into its work. Um, so I actually like the 2,400 for this, the extra 700 metres. Um, it will get back, but I think in this staying affair, that may not be as big a deal as, as the shorter races. So they, they can probably wear them down. So I had it on top and I thought Secret Shima um, was also a really good chance. Uh, it's got the the fitness in the legs. Uh, won nicely at Cranbourne last start, um, so I think it can also run well. Beauty. Race three is a 1,400 metre benchmark, 70. Uh, we've got the lightly raced, well, one start, P Pain winner coming here, uh, drawn okay, and um, I think can uh, progress from that. Um, I had the main danger down is Ravaged Awards, but that was another one. I'm waiting on track pattern. I hit the line really well last time. If you run, I think that is a, a danger here. And um, what have you done? Yeah. Um, big step up winning the maiden, stepping into this uh, benchmark 70. I, I went for Kambaya from the with Oliver Award Cummings. It got out of its ground last start. I don't think, and it finished very nicely, less than two lengths behind my Yankee girl that would be winning this race. Yeah. Um, I think it'll sit a little bit closer than that. And if you go back uh, four starts, it won over 1,300 at Sandown in a similar race, beating Literary Magnate, uh, which is good form for a race like this. So uh, I think it's got the class edge on these, hopefully not too far out uh, back in running and Oliver will get this one home. Beauty. Uh, race four is a 1,000-metre benchmark, 78. What have you done? 
Yeah, tricky little affair. Zipping Boy, I think, is a little bit skinny in the market, um, but looks to have uh, the class edge here. Uh, has had some nice runs in Melbourne, went to Brizzy last prep and ran really well in, in some good quality races, uh, come back and showed a good run. I was just a bit bit concerned on the price. Um, I think it comes down to it and McKeever, but I had Zipping Boy on top uh, purely based on um, class edge. Uh, yeah, I'm the zipping boy. Um, I'm pretty keen. I just missed it the 20s on a Saturday a couple of weeks back. We're going to back up here, back to midweek grade, uh, rolling along, unbeaten in the heavy, unbeaten at the track. A um, little bit of a claim, but she'll have one job, which is just get a nice rhythm behind Twister Fury there. And I think it'll be very hard to beat. And it looks like on the drift this morning, you might get 250 as well. Um, if you shop about, race five is the mile benchmark 70. Uh, what have you done here, Beaver? Yeah, look, um, pretty open affair, this one. So um, interesting race, four horses in the market, all under $5. I stuck with Kiss Me if you can. Um, I just think it's going really well at the moment. Uh, really nice run here last start. Uh, and it just got pipped on the line, controlled the pace and sat on the pace there. I think you can do the same here. Um, so I've got it on top and think it could be the hardest to beat and Shakespeare is the main danger. Um, with you, I've got it on top. You know what you're going to get from that gate. It's going to roll along on the pace. Just napped here last time. Uh, I like Jamie Mott going forward as well. Um, so I think it is here. It's, it's the horse to get past. So i uh, going to stick around the four dollar mark with Kiss Me, you kiss me if you can as well. Uh, race six is a 1,400 metre benchmark 70 where I'm going to, Sort of have the same story here with Danistar. Um, Linda Mitchell roll forward um, after bolting in here last time. Uh, again, not a lot of pressure underneath it. Uh, I think it will roll forward. be very hard to beat. I've got the main danger and a bit of value as shove over um, with the scratchings. Of the price is gone, but I thought it overperformed on, at Flemington last start. Comes here and will be uh, will be forward as well. I think they can control it and run the one-two. What have you made of this? Yeah, look, I'm looking towards El Rocco to split these horses and hopefully um, uh, come out on top here. I just, something tells me this horse might have a little bit of ability. Um, really bolted in at uh, Ballarat in the maiden last start after a spell on heavy going. One by seven lengths, sat off the pace and put them away carrying the 59 and a half. So it gets two and a half kilos relief there. But if you go back to last preparation, they obviously felt this horse had some ability because it started in uh, the group one, um, the derby. Uh, and uh, look, it finished down the track, but they obviously felt it had some ability. And the reason they started it there is it ran really nicely in the group two behind Forgot You, finished three lengths off them. So uh, progressed nicely last preparation um, in really good company races. Uh, put out for a spell, come, came back uh, nearly 12 months um, and put them away. So I think uh, maybe this horse has matured and we'll see you today. Yeah, good call. Uh, race seven also might be one of those ones that was trained out to a three-year-old staying trip, but now they'll keep a bit fresher and um, be more dangerous at these shorter, shorter distances. But we're watching that one. Uh, 400 metre benchmark seven is up next. So what have you done here? Yeah, look, really, really open race. Um, I've settled on start and last uh, from the Ma Eustace stable. Uh, third up here today. Uh, look, got out of its ground at Sandown last start, so I'm hoping that by this time they can run on a little bit. Uh, so a bit of a question mark there, but uh, flew home last start over the 1,300. Uh, again, has a little bit of ability, uh, pretty open field here, and so I thought I'd just put it on top with... Uh, my used as car combination around the seven dollars. I'm going to have a spec on Van Roy here. Similar sort of thinking to to your one in the last race, but uh, talented horse ended up in the um, Autumn Classic in the last prep. Uh, resumes it pretty well, unbeaten this distance, and Van Mellum going on at the moment seems to be a good thing. So, going to have an each way play on that from Free Flying Star, who um, just a bit of a tardy start last time and crossed the line with Jupiter, who so again. Uh, we think it's got a bit of an ability, so I think they fit in this race pretty well, but it's a, a tricky contest. Um, 
And we finished today with another one uh, over the 1800 meter benchmark. 70. Have you got anything here? Yeah, this was was super, super, super hard race. Um, I went looking for something here uh, just because it was uh, a tricky race, and I've come up with Carbonetti from the Waller Stable, uh, third up here, uh, and ran nicely again at Sandown last start behind Daniel Star. So got back and, and finished up okay at, at, uh, at quite substantial odds. Um, mm. So it gets up to the 1800 metres here, so that will really suit. I think it can potentially, with uh, sort of some general improvement, run really well. Um, and I had the main danger, Lorenzetti, with uh, Oliver on board. Uh, one well last start at Geelong, um, and third up here should be fitter. Uh, yeah, tricky race. I've I've ended up with uh, Fen Fengerada on top, uh, off the win last time against the Autumn Sun. Uh, drawn inside here, shouldn't be too far from the pace if the rail is playing that way. It will be hard to beat uh, from Hopkins, who gets Ben Mellum. Uh, drawn inside again, and I think will run well as well. But tricky races, they could run this five times, as the market suggests, and have five different winners, I think. Um, we got a best in value from, from Sandown? Yeah, my best comes up in race three, number two, Ken Bayer. Uh, I think it can run well, and my value bet comes up in the last... Race number eight, number 12, Carbonetti. Beautiful. I'm going to make uh, Zipping Boy my best in race number four. And value will go with, actually we'll go with Shove Over in the um, in race six for the uh, Maloney team. The other card today is at Warwick Farm where it's a heavy 10 uh, rail, I believe is in the true. So my page resets on me. And... I'm thinking that means middle of the track by the middle of the day. So coming down to the uh, middle of the outside, uh, probably don't be too far from the pace again. It's held up not too bad from scratchings here. Let me kick off with a two, three old maiden. How are you starting off, Beaver? Yeah, I think they'll probably sit off the fence most of the day anyway, um, even from the start of the day. Yeah, I'm going for avoidance uh, from the Waterhouse Pot Stable. Um, tried really well for, for this race, uh, the gate. Gate eight suits. So I think it'll sort of jump and run, sit in the middle of the track. Um, first up run was well in the market in Ramwick at Ramwick uh, back in November. Uh, sat on pace and wasn't too far from them. Uh, tried well enough for this. Hard to beat. Beautiful. Uh, I've got uh, the blue colours on top here. After cabin uh, trials were good. Bowman booked you. I think it finds a running line place and might be the one coming down the middle of the track on debut here from Avoidance, who you mentioned, also been gelded since last prep. Uh, the trial's fine and uh, should be one of the early leaders. Race two, 2200 metre benchmark, 72. And what do we do with the Milky Bar kid here, Beaver? Look, I probably won't do much um, at all with this race. I'm concerned that this, again, is a little bit of a trap, even money Milky Bar kid and... Uh, very nervous that Waterhouse has the second favourite at $5 here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. that, that concerns me a little bit. Um, one will probably lead uh, Milky Bar Kid and so you know it will probably sit uh, behind it or just off pace. So that's a little bit of a worry. But uh, So I've kind of stayed out of this um, small field. Um, leave it to you. Everyone potting the Milky Bar Kid, including me, I've just got a feeling it might come out and win by four and everyone going, oh, okay, just because that last race, I don't know what to – maybe just put a pen through that. But uh, I'm not tipping. I'm going to tip Tidal Creek just because it's Nash sitting probably on the back of the two Waterhouse runners here and um, was different. I would have found Maricopa, but not enthused about the jockey booking. And to be honest, like you, I probably won't even bet. So uh, we might just move on to your benchmark 72 over the 1,200 metres, which I think this is a good race. Um, three good chances. Uh, I'm in market order. Vientian it was a very nice debut. Strong through the line. Looks a nice style of a horse. Uh, and I think, and gets Jay Collett, who loves the wet tracks. So all ticks there. Pokari Kari could, uh, if it repeats what it did at Gosford, could blow them away. And I think AC Express is a talented horse too. They've got an opinion of it. Coming back here has uh, trolled okay as well. Uh, in market order, uh, whether I bet or not, I, I would probably back the favourite first. Beaver, what have you done here? I've gone post Curry Curry. Um, willing to forgive last run. It was really given no chance in the run. It was caught a bit wide, uh, written up, upside down, I felt, in the 
given the, the circumstances yeah. on the soft track. I'm hoping change. that... What's that? Nice jockey change. Yeah, nice jockey change here. It's got the inside gate, so as long as it can shift off and just sit behind the pace and um, give it a last crack at him, I think it can uh, get over the top of him, but probably fight it out with the, the favourite. Race number four is a 1,200 metre, 64. Uh, what have you done in this one? Yeah, I really like the favourite here. Um, arbitration, uh, McDonald booking, Cummings. Uh, all, all, all the last three runs have been pretty impressive. Um, it's one at Warwick Farm, which, which I like. Uh, it's trialled here and won that trial in nice style against um, some decent company. I think it will be winning. I agree. Not much more to add. Uh, one of the better bets on the card. Race five, a 1,400-metre benchmark 72 for the boys. Uh, I went back and forth in this one. I could have found Trevest. Um, I'm a bit cold on Kerrick McAvoy at the moment, but I could have had it on top. Uh, I don't necessarily want to play too much else with the other two tied to each other, so I'm, I'm probably staying out as well. Um, for the sake of a tip, Trevest from Snits on Fire here. What have you done? Find that a bit amusing because I come up with Trevest. Um, uh, I, I just thought the same thing. I, they were tied together. I thought Trevest's last start run was good. I think it's been consistent enough. Um, it is hard to catch. Um, but so, uh, this isn't a difficult race. Again, the inside draw, but uh, McAvoy has you... As you know, um, I have the same feelings as you, but I'm going to throw caution to the wind here and say Travis can win. Yeah, fair enough. Um, race six is the girls' version. Again, benchmark 72, 1,400 metres. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I narrowed it down to two here. I come back, come down to Flower Moon and Safika, um, and I'm going to stick with Safika. Um, I wasn't as overly disappointed in its first up run. I thought it'd be hard to beat in that. Uh, but it did get back and finished off okay uh, mm. up at Eagle Farm. That was essentially its first run here in Australia um, after a couple of trials that were, were impressive enough. Um, I'm going to suggest that it's got a fair bit of improvement in it. Uh, sticks to the 1400, gets Bowman here, four gates good. Um, maybe can sit off on the win, but Flower Moon is going great at the moment. Won really well last start. Uh, the main danger. A couple of in a spec. Uh, I, I do like what you said about Safika as well. Um, that was one I, I may well play as well. But uh, Air of Alsace now goes Jess Taylor, Jess Taylor to Nashua Willa. Um, good run first up. I think comes back here. Drawn outside might be uh, staring me down the outside here, giving a sight. And I may have something on list in Lana as well. A wet tracker goes from Kathy Ahara to Winona in town, which is interesting in double figures. Race, I'm not a you know, I'm going to play two at, at each way price in a in a tricky race here. And you're going to finish today over the mile benchmark 72. Is it the day for lease? Last chance, last chance. Yeah, I agree. Going to talk us through it. Yeah, yeah look, I'm going to stick with lease. It's been racing, um, in some weekend, uh style company, racing good horses, Alcione, Kanazawa. Um, so I, I really think that this is, sets up for it. In fairness, I think it hasn't had a lot of luck. Um, this preparation in most of its runs, it's been caught wide, taken on in the lead, um, raced a bit ungenerously. There's been, twice, yeah. yeah, there's been plenty of excuses um, for it. Um, so Today, it gets back to the right company. Uh, it's drawn uh, sort of out, outside of sort of barriers where the going will be better and it gets J-Mac on board. So if it doesn't win today with J-Mac on board in this field with, with the right run, it can go and, you know, it may have to sit outside the lead here, but um, I think that won't, won't hurt it as much as in some of the other companies. So I think it can win today. Yeah, I agree with what you said. Um, it had no luck, um, if you call it that. Every, every just about every start of this prep, I like J Mac going on, and last chance. I'd be disappointed in the price, um, but it is here. I think this is its day. It's here to run well. So, going to stick with it. Do you have a best in value at Warwick Farm? 
Yeah, I do, mate. My best comes up in race four, number seven, arbitration. And my value bet comes up in <clears throat> race six, number one, Sapika. I agree. Arbitration's my best on the day. And I'm going to keep the, uh, the blue colours theme for the day. I think the other one earlier will run well, um, who I've just forgotten his name. Via Vientiani will run well again. And I think my value on the card will be in the first after cabin. We'll just go blue all day there. Now, what do you got for us in Queensland? Yeah, got a few here in Queensland. Um, my best bet, oh, not my best bet, my best bets are race two, number 10, Pretes from the Wallace stable. I uh, see it's been backed in, so I think it'll be super hard to beat. Um, I've got race five, number two, Mirror Me, resuming today. I think around the $5 mark is very nice odds. Race six, number eight, Jayanthi will be hard to beat. And then my other bet comes up in race eight, number eight, Jamelian Bolt. Beautiful. Good job, Eva. Good luck this afternoon. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow night to look towards a big weekend of racing, return to Mooney Valley, uh, and hopefully an almost... It'll actually be nice to race in Sydney, let's say. Hopefully you race in Sydney and we get back to the valley. Good punning, guys, and we'll talk soon.